afternoon. Welcome to North Northumberland Local Area Council. Can I remind everybody that this is live streamed and can you make sure your mobile phones are on silent or switched off? First of all, can I ask, do we have any apologies? I have three. Councillor Gordon Castle, Councillor Wendy Thompson, and Councillor Guy Runner Thompson. Yes, Chair, I've also got apologies from Councillor Clark and Councillor Bridget. I think you meant Wendy Patterson. Sorry. Uh, next item is members' disclosure of interests. Oh. Determination of plan applications. So we've got two plan applications today, and we have a procedure to follow. So to begin with, I will introduce the plan application. There will be an update from the officer and then we will have public speaking. Public members are allowed five minutes to give their presentation. And then it is members questions to the plan officers and then we go to debate. If you speak, make sure you press the button on your microphone and a red light will come on. When you finish speaking, please close your microphone before anyone else speaks. Okay, so the first application is 21 stroke 07153 revised matters. Application for approval of appearance, landscaping, layout and scale of approved application 130802 OUT. And can I hand over to the officer, Mr. James Bellis, to present the, the planning? Thanks, Chair. Um, yeah, so this is the reserve matters application for appearance, landscaping, layout, and scale on the approved application. 13 slash 00802 slash OUT. Um, access was included with the outline application, so that's not something that we'll be considering today. And um, this is at Land North of High Fair in Wooler. Um, so here um, you'll know we've got a red line boundary. You've got Common Road here, which extends up from the middle of Wooler. Um, then you've got on the periphery of the settlement, you've got the site here, which is adjoins High Fair, um, which is the road here. And then you've got Broomy Road, which runs along this side here, if you note. And you've also got a public footpath that extends down where my cursor is going, adjoining the site. Um, you'll note the blue lined area, that's, in, that's other land that's included within the ownership of the applicant. And which we asked them to demonstrate on site location plans but the red line is what we are considering today as the application boundary um, here is the aerial photograph which shows you know, the context of the site within like as and how it relates to Wooler you'll note you've got the majority of the town to the east here you've got common road coming up from the center of Wooler as I just pointed out to you and you've got the site here just where my cursor is, with access onto Common Road. I've got a more zoomed in, um, more close scale um, aerial photograph for you there. You've got the caravan site to the north, the static caravan site to the north, and High Fair here to the south, and other housing in and around Wooler. Um, here we have the site plan. Um, so you've got the properties here. You'll note in the report I've got the sizes of each of each um, of each house and the sort of housing mix. 
um, is set in that report. You've got the access road coming here from, with my cursor at the bottom of the page, we've got the access road coming in, sweeping round in front to the north of the properties. And then we've got some communal, well, we've got parking there for these dwellings towards this end of the, this end of the site. Um, you'll note that the outline was for 36 dwellings. Um, this application for reserve matters is for 14. Um, due to the nature of the application, they don't have another opportunity to submit a further reserve matters in for any more properties. So it will be the 14 on the site is what we're considering under this application. Um, here we've got floor plans and elevations of plots one, two, three, and four. These are two story dwellings. Here you've got plots five and six, which are effectively three story dwellings because they've got a floor in the roof, um, in the roof space. We wouldn't refer to that as a two and a half story because, well, you either have two or three stories legally. Um, seven and eight, again, it's a three story property with the second floor in the roof space. And here we have plots 9 to 14, which are formed by a terrace. Here are some site photographs. These are taken by me from the northeast corner of the site, looking across the site towards High Fair and Broomy Road. Here you've got the road, the, the small road you can see is the access road that goes to the rear of High Fair on the left hand side of the screen and you're just looking across the site there in its current form. These photographs are taken from the path to the rear of the properties at High Fair. Um, yeah. And this is a view of the access that's already been approved as part of the outline application. And that's just a view down Common Road from the site at the moment. Um, and just to fin finish off, that's the, um, the site location plan. That's the, well, that's the aerial photograph again. Um, in terms of updates, um, since I wrote the report a couple of weeks back, um, we now portion full weight to the um, to the Wooler neighbourhood plan. Um, that wouldn't have <laughs> my recommendation stays the same um, in terms of how I've assessed it against the policies. I think. You can see that from the report. Um, in terms of, it's been pointed out to me in seven in paragraph seven point two six, I've got an erroneous section, um, and I'll just read out to you now what that should read as. It should read, it is therefore considered that the proposal would be appropriate in county terms and would comply with policies F one and F three of the Berwick Local Plan. Chapter 12 of the MPPF, the guidance set out in the National Design Guide, emerging Northumberland Local Plan and the emerging Willow Neighbourhood Plan in respect of how the proposal responds to its context, the identity of the proposal and the built form of the proposal and the surrounding townscape. So that's, yeah, that's a part, it's the first sentence of that, that, the first element of that, the first two lines of that paragraph that are erroneous. It should say appropriate instead of inappropriate and and that the application would comply with policies F1 and F3 rather than would not fully. Um, but yeah, thank you very much. Those are all the updates that I intend to give. Um, the recommendation from officers is for approval of this application. Thank you. Thank you. We now have public speaking and the first speaker is Joyce Robertson. You have five minutes. Thank you, Mr Chairman and councillors. My name is Joyce Robertson and I'm representing the following comments on behalf of Joyce Guthrie and Bucky Murray, the 130 residents of High Fair, Common Road, Broomy Road, Ramsey's Lane and Oliver Road, Wooler, who object against the above reserved matters during consultation. Regarding the consultation that took place during February and May 2021, 
was referenced to above reserved matters, over 130 plus residents objected during this period, highlighting a number of concerns to be expanded upon below. It should be noted that the subsequent amendments have attracted less objections as there was no physical notice posted locally, despite James Bellis, the sign planning officer, being alerted to this by Becky Murray and stating that he would have a notice erected. This resulted in a lack of awareness by local residents and the removal of opportunity to object. A lack of communication from NCC planning office has resulted in due process not being followed. Residents raised concern in their objections to the proposed road layout entering the site, which changes the existing road priority. Residents are concerned that his, this would cause significant risk of harm accident as the existing road coming from the National Park towards Common Road is a steep hill in which a giveaway point is proposed. A further concern has been raised by parents within our community around what would be considered as a blind spot on that corner. Children play in that area and they would be placed at greater risk by increased and surprise of emergency traffic. The proposed change of road priority coincides with the reduction and single track road leading to the National Park and is oversight is opposite the start of the St Cuthbert's Way track. Visitors numbers are increasing year on year with this route being particularly populated during the common to the common providing a car park and access for all. The night traffic is also increasing due to the increased interest in the dark sky status. The 2015-16 visitor numbers in North Northumberland Park were up by 11.5% in August. Source NNP STEAM report, and this trend continues. We also expect an upturn in tourism through the Adgeffrin distillery currently under construction. The local postman commented this would be, very, be a, very, a great worry in the winter as the road up to, common, to the common is never gritted and stopped and stopping at a giveaway could be difficult. It should be noted that the significant detritus that flows down the road culminating at the point of the new development entrance amasses to such an extent that Northumbrian Water bring metal detectors to locate the access points to their pipework and stop valves, digging down some six inches through the build-up. This is due in part to wash from the road but also to the flow of water from the field opposite, also owned by Ferguson Blythe Limited, who were notified that their field drain had collapsed beneath the fields some 15 years ago and have de demonstrated a distinct lack of care for the safety and welfare of the road users with the regular flooding and freezing of water across the road. Residents raised concern in their objections about a number of traffic issues which included the already identified pinch point at Ramsey's Lane. This is still the only route to the proposed development. There will still remain a single file traffic up and down the hill, which already creates daily congestion and near accidents. This still makes this route unfit for additional traffic. The road surface continues to be in poor condition due to the heavy nature of existing traffic, both in volume and weight. Repair work is infrequent and of poor quality. This will continue to cause issues as the increase in traffic will escalate the issues. Residents raise concern in their objections. Whom will this development benefit? There is development in progress in Wooler for 73 dwellings consisting of a mix of two, three, four and five bedroom properties, 11 of which are affordable housing. This development will clearly have an impact on availability and capacity within local services. There is still no comment regarding the preschool or education provision, capacity of NHS services or impact of uninformed services mentioned in the application. Employment locally is limited and the public transport infrastructure to commute is very poor. This should be fully assessed and as the additional demand placed on services and if there is capacity to cope with it. Further reference to this, there has been no assessment included regarding matters relating to education. Drinking water Can I just stop you there? Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, five minutes is up. Thank you. The next to speak is 
Councillor Caroline Cummings on behalf of Worth Parish Council. Good afternoon, everyone. Firstly, can I thank you for allowing me to speak at this planning meeting. My name is Caroline Cumming, and I'm chair of Woola Parish Council, and it is on their behalf that I address you today. Woola Parish Council have historically had concerns regarding this development, and some are still to be addressed. First, the original application 13 forward slash 00800 slash OUT was for 36 houses, 50% of which were to be affordable, despite our major reservations regarding highways access. The benefit of 18 affordable homes in what were predominantly a rural farming community with mainly low incomes swayed the PC to support the application. Secondly, the original referral to chair document from July 2015 refers to the 50% affordable houses and notes the PC, con PC concerns regarding Ramsey's Lane marketplace access and the problems with large construction traffic passing parked cars on Ramsey's Lane. The PC st still holds the view that Ramsey's Lane is already overburdened with traffic as it is the only highway to over 200 homes. A quarry, water tanks that supply the village and is also the busy gateway vi to visitors to National Park. These water tanks need to be replenished three to six times daily by huge water tankards during the summer months. It is our view that by adding potentially a further 28 cars plus visiting traffic would have to s s swerve impact, uh, severe impact on Ramsey's Lane and the addition of construction traffic could result in major traffic congestion problems. We would like it noted that this that NCC highways have not identified this increase in traffic as a problem. We would hope that en en any result, resulting issues will be addressed promptly. Thirdly, the PC is also concerned that the original offer of 18 affordable homes appears to have been reduced on the S106 to 15%, that's five homes, and on this application there are no affordable homes offered. We understand that there may be three available as the original S106 would be in force, but can find no documentary evidence as to why the 50% was reduced to 15%. We, the Parish Council and other objectors, do not appear to have been consulted on this reduction. Fourthly, major concerns have been raised both with NCC and the PC over the risk of flood damage to Highburn House, which lies below this proposed development. The PC does not feel this risk has been fully considered as currently as the Kundi is blocked and surface water running off the pinwell does not flow into the ditch identified in the drainage strategy, but rather runs down the highway into the road drain. Once this is repaired with the new highways building work, then the increase of surface water being directed into the ditch is identified on the drainage strategy report would have a significant impact on the property below. Fifth, the report from Northumbria Water Limited only appears to address issues of foul water and it should not be noted that during the summer, High Fair suffers a notable lack of water already without the additional impact of the 70 plus houses recently built on Wheatwood Road and then potentially a further 14 in this development. Finally, under the NPPF, we believe this is not a sustainable form of development because the type of houses do not meet the local need. The S106 only allows for 60% rental homes, with the remainder being offered for sale at discount market value. However, we feel that Wooler is sadly lacking in three-bedroom rental properties, and if this development is allowed to proceed, we would strongly lobby for the number of affordable houses for rent to be increased to the five previ previously offered. Thank you so much for listening to me. Thank you. Next speaker is in support, and that is Simon Beebe. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yes, I'm here in support of the application on behalf of the applicant and as a designer of the scheme. Um, the, it, the scheme has been approved for 36 houses, as you know. Um, we were brought in as a fresh pair of eyes on this application, and it became apparent to us at an early stage that uh, from the point of view of the engineering works required on site and potentially the visual impact into the site that a smaller scale scheme would actually be more viable and appropriate. Our first version of events was for six houses on the site. Um, that did 
um, work in most respects in terms of the technical aspects of the site, but we had long conversations with the case officers regarding their concerns over the housing mix and scale. That's why we're now at a position with 14 houses. Um, it has been arrived at following quite a lot of close consultation with case officers, and we're grateful for their time on that. Um, the highways we know to be an issue. Now, the access has been approved as part of the outline scheme. The principle of taking the priority of the traffic into the site was as a direct intervention by the highways team. This was their suggestion and their request, and we were happy to go along with it as their, as their recommendation. They felt it was actually a safer scheme. It slowed traffic down on the entry into the uh, settlement and also provided a better means of getting heavy goods vehicles in for bin collections and deliveries and such like into the scheme. So um, we're happy that, it, that you know, we, we have definitely met everything that the highways team wanted us to achieve on that. And the, the impact from 14 houses surely on the traffic and the congestion up and down Common Road is inevitably going to be less than for 36 houses, both in terms of the day-to-day uh, -day living and also from construction. The, um, we're very mindful of, of uh, all of the objections that have been raised by um, the, the residents. Uh, we've looked also at the visual impact, which was raised by quite a number of people in terms of character and landscape. We've spent quite a bit of time looking at what the nature of the uh, vernacular architectural style is in Wooler, and there's very much a, a case of um, every architectural style you could think of, really. So it wasn't about fitting in with a, with a given background character. Uh, we chose to, again, with con um, consideration from the officer's input, uh, we, we picked a style that was very much in proportion and um, using a palette of materials from the Victorian era, from the, most of the town centre houses, which we felt was appropriate. When you're looking from the distant views, looking into the, into the village, uh, sorry, into this, the development, it will then create a much better um, sense of tone and, and, and scale to the scheme than you would see from sort of a modern cookie cutter style design from a housing uh, estate normally nowadays. Um, we have felt that we've met all of the requirements from the ecology team and also from local lead flood authority. We've adapted the scheme on a couple of occasions to suit their requirements and they've said they're perfectly uh, happy with the measures taken. So in conclusion, we feel that the, the scheme offers a much more attractive and appropriate response to the context and to the setting than the 36 unit scheme as it was envisaged originally. And we feel it adds a certain quality and range and choice of the housing offering in Wooler and, and certainly reduces the impact on amenity to nearby residents from a reduction from 36 to 14, a, a reduction which also would have an impact on or reduced impact on the traffic flow for all concerned as well. Thank you. Thank you. It's now members' questions to the planning officers. Councillor Mark Mather. Thanks, Chair. Um, this has been quite a complex planning process, which has went on since 2013. Um, sadly, I think there was mistakes made back then um, with regards to the, the one or six suggestion to improvement to highways, which is, you know, a fundamental part of this. Um, the first bit I wanted to ask about was um, the affordable homes. Back in 2013, the, the, the plan that was approved by this council had 50% affordable homes, 18 was in the document. The parish council then, he, he, although supported the affordable home number, did raise the, the highways issue. In 2015, it was still noted at 50% affordable homes. 2017, the documentation seemed to change from 18 to 15 homes. Um, but it did state that 60% of those homes were for rent. Um, then it's it, it, this document it seems to have dropped to 15%, which is only three, which is the one or six suggestion. It's not been put in by the applicant. It has to have been suggested from the council. Um, Wooler's housing need 
is, as far as I can see, not a three bed for sale property. Um, can I ask why the housing officer hasn't looked at the, the housing need where it is three bed affordable rent properties, not sell properties? That's the first question. Um, yeah, so in terms of the affordable housing contribution that we have to go with it in relation to the, what was on the section 106 at the point that it was determined and agreed, um, which I understand to be 15%. Um, in terms of that actual formal affordable housing contribution, that needs to come, that needs to be ratified through an affordable housing statement as set out in the 106. Um, in terms of why we're asking for affordable housing in terms of discount market value and not affordable rent. The MPPF requires us to have 10% on site as an ownership product, affordable home ownership product, um, which would leave um, a very small amount of affordable rent. So it's the affordable housing officer's view that we're better. It would be more appropriate to ask for three DMV rather than two point, well, two DMV units and point one as a rent towards a rental property. Um, so yeah, our view is that because of the nature of how um, the MPPS steers us, we need to, we're actually getting more on site than what we would do, than what we need, what, than what they need to provide. If that answers your question. It does, but obviously not the answer I wanted. Um, I just think it's a, you know, I can understand why they went for DMV, but I, when it's not for the local need or the community benefit, it's very hard to go back and explain that decision um, to the members of the public. So I, I think that does need considered. Um, with regards to the highways um, and the, the ad adoption of the communal area, is NCC going to adopt the whole highway into the site or is that a part of the management plan set up by the owner? Because I see there's communal areas, um, planting and the highway. Are we expected to adopt that or is that something that is going to be kept under the management plan in the document? I believe it's in the management plan. Um, so it's because we've had discussions over the refuse vehicles and they've had a declaration with regards to the refuse vehicles access in the site. And I understand there will be a management plan type arrangement. Okay, so we won't be ex expected to adopt the highway? That's my understanding, yes. Okay. Um, the next bit is, is still on highways. Um, again, I said the mistake was made back in 2013. Um, it's a, to give you some context, if you don't know, well, it's a seven foot entrance um, to around 200 homes. Um, on several occasions in the last year, there's been minor RTCs on that highway um, and it's been blocked a number of times by emergency vehicles. I've done it myself. If you get called out to a house on that road, there is nowhere to park. The road is closed until you know the ambulance and that's cleared. So I think that needs noted. In the, in the document, it says um, on 7.33, about if the develop if the development is severe about changing the um, the transport grounds if it's severe, I do, I do think it's severe um, when there is one access to two hundred homes and, and it's seven foot wide and often blocked. Um, it's that severe. NCC are currently carrying out um, investigation work on it, and that's just the number of homes that we've got. We're having to put CCTV cameras up to manage the traffic flow. And it got to the point where it was we had so many accidents. Anne Marie Trevelyan also attended the site and met with residents to try and come up with a scheme to help the area. That hasn't been done, and yet we're looking at putting more houses in. Um, that road is used often on by HGVs going up to the quarry, um, leading timber out the forestry, um, number of uh, wood items. Um, so the new can I remind you that this is to be a question? So as I was saying, the, the wood wagons, um, we are having to lead water into the site often and the number of visitors. Um, it is a steep incline on the highway for where it's been recommended to change. Just this year we had a, a water tanker 
brakes fail and come down that hill. So can you explain to me why the highways have changed the road layout and the priority when um, there was such an issue with a non-gritted steep highway used by HGVs? I mean, I, I can't, we can't answer the technical questions to do with highways, but what we do have to remind you of is we've already accepted that. We're not considering access today. I don't that's, believe that's that that the... was accepted in the original plans of the priority change. That is a new adaptation, so highways should have been here I mean, the, to the only that. thing, The only thing that we're considering in front of us is the internal arrangement within the site not the access into the site that has been established and we can't change that when, can i ask when that was established and please because it wasn't that was in with the... the outline planning application the actual access to the site Our priority change that's what i'm talking about was the priority change agreed in 2013 i, I couldn't i don't have the specifics in front of me but very difficult chair to make a decision on a plan application when we haven't got the people here to answer the questions on you know, which was going to be an important part of this planning because that wasn't agreed back then. Um, the next point I've got to make about um, drainage matters. I've been approached by a number of concerned residents about the drainage. Um, and we, I think I need some explanation on that. The, the current ditch that's been looked at where the drainage is going to go is dry because the Cundy's blocked. All the water from the other site owned by Mr Ferguson runs down a highway and into a highway drain. So when that Cundy is repaired, which it will be, I'll make sure it is, all that water is going to go back to a drain. That ditch goes to a 150 mil pipe in somebody else's property. That's all it is. They've not been consulted. So can you explain to me what, what depth this has been looked at, considering the private landowner next door hasn't been consulted, um, when all this water plus the surface water is then drained down a 150 mil pipe and who will cover the costs when the damage does happen because I've seen it happen in the past. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I'll take this um, question, please. Um, yes, so certainly um, on behalf of the LLFA, we have looked at the surface water uh, drainage for the site and ultimately, yes, the water does go into that ditch um, but it does go there at a restricted rate, um, which is 2.8 litres a second, which is equivalent to the Greenfield runoff rate for that particular area. So in terms of rates post-development, it will be no greater than existing. There is also a um, attenuation basin that is going to be on site as well. So all of the surface water which is collected within the site itself will go to this basin and then that will discharge to that ditch albeit, like I said, at that restricted rate. So the water will be contained on site and then released slowly back into this ditch. Um, you raised a question with regards to the blocked Cundy at, at present. Um, unfortunately, matters of blockages within water courses are outside of the planning remit, mm. but certainly it is something that we can take outside the planning process and if needs be, we can serve enforcement action for people to remove blockages from water courses. So certainly that has been, that, that can be looked at, but that is a matter outside of this planning process. Uh, my concern was the increased amount of water when that is repaired, plus the surface water drainage, even at the lower rate. If that doesn't get through this 150 mil pipe, who pays for the, yep. the damage that's caused by this planning application? Sure. So what we look at is we look at the situation currently. So we look at the pre-development situation there and we look at it post-development. And because the waters are going to be restricted to the equivalent greenfield runoff rate and that water is going to be contained on site, from a from an actual planning matter and from what policy dictates, the there will be no increase in flooding off site as a result of this development and because of the matter and because of the mitigation measures that are being installed within the development itself. So because of that and because the actual rates and whatnot were established at the outline stage too, so we're adhering to what was previously being agreed at the outline stage, but for details which have been put forward within this application as well, do adhere to planning policy. And therefore, like I said, the ultimate conclusion is that this development with the mitigation measures will not increase at risk of flooding elsewhere. Chair, Thanks, Chair. Councillor Thorne. Yes, Chairman. 
um, you know, reference has been made to um, a previous reserve matters application um, for six houses. Um, you know, what was the basis for your refusal for those six? Um, so it was generally that I f we felt that the, um, the scheme put forward, we felt that the houses um, put forward weren't in, ca in character or in keeping with what is in the surrounding area in this area of Wooler. Um, we felt there were quite substantially larger houses than what's in the vicinity of the site. We just felt that they were out of character with the with the surrounding area. Thank, thank you. And you know, I do get that because obviously you've got um, high fare just below, and you know, looking at the current application, those fourteen seem to relate much better to what's down below than the six. So thank you. Councillor Hill. Thank you. Uh, three quick questions. I'll take them individually. There was a suggestion, I know this isn't directly relevant, but it's useful background information to help us with best practice. There was a suggestion that the communication was poor over this application, which would be backed up by the fact that Woola Parish Council, it says he didn't give a response, which would suggest they don't care or they're not they haven't got any strong feelings about the application the fact that the chair of the council has come here this evening would back up what the first speaker said that there's been some issue with publication and communication around this is that fair comment just to confirm and um, that we did erect a site notice and that was put up on the 13th of may and the application was publicised in the press on the 29th of April, so we have fulfilled our duties with respect to, to publicity. Um, I do understand that, um, that the Parish Council are saying they did provide us with a response. When I was just having a look at our system, we do have an email from them saying um, that they needed a bit of extra time and could we give them extra time, which we agreed, and we would be getting a response, but we don't appear to have ever received that. Um, when we did report this um, via our chair referral process, we did, we did report that we expected that there would be an objection from the Parish Council because we were aware from previous discussions. But on our system, we haven't actually got a record. We have double checked. We don't have any comments from, from Waller Parish Council. And is it not normal? I mean, that's a statutory minimum, but is it not normal if there's been a, anyone that's commented on an application before that they're automatically notified? Or should we to say... No. We did used to, um, but no, that, that, that got stopped. Um, we just don't have the resources to get in touch with anybody who previously objected. Um, now there is a requirement that you need to, um, you need to resubmit your, your objections. We don't, we don't pull them over from the previous applications. You would but need no, to I, I just would have thought, you know, somewhere it wouldn't seem that there was a, a link. You can get the emails off of everyone that's sent in a comment and then you just would send we, a notification. We don't do that. That's not our common practice anymore. It did used to be, but it isn't anymore. Okay. Um, the second question, uh, I, the commentary regarding the neighbourhood plan, which is about to be, which has been passed, not publicised, I, I couldn't quite follow, I've lost the page, but in your opinion, is there no issues conflict with the neighbourhood plan? No, not insofar as we'd consider this as a reserve matters application, no. Okay, uh, and then just the final thing to clarify, the issue of affordable homes, the number's been reduced because the number of properties has been reduced. If the, there was an application to expand the amount of properties again, would we go back up to the original level? Could you just talk me through where we're at with and are we able to demand, ask for an increased number just now? I don't believe we can in terms of this application. If we were to get a fresh application in, we'd be considering it against the current requirements in terms of um, affordable housing. At the moment, we're tied by what the 106 says, which, which indicates it's 15%. Thank you. Councillor Hunter. Thank you, Chair. Um, there seems to be some co concerns about drainage and that, and about the drainage being on other 
uh, owned land is uh, if we were minded to approve this today is there any option that we could have a grampian condition put on because i know that's been done on other applications so that they get uh, working with other landowners to resolve drainage issues I mean, it's certainly a possibility we haven't um, engaged with other people. Um, often when we do gramping conditions, it's within NCC land, so we can sort of have control over that particular condition. Um, so um, maybe one of the planners can maybe explain a bit more than, than I can with, with regards to gramping conditions and who to enter into. Um, but certainly when it's a third party outside of the developer and NCC, it does become more difficult to do so. Um, but certainly we can only look at the situations of pre and post development and certainly there's certainly the measures within the development we can control um but we can certainly look to liaise with um outside the planning process um as a result but um, i don't know if, if one of the plans could maybe elaborate slightly further and the only thing i was really going to add to that is we would normally only add a grampian condition if there was a real need to and it would be a last resort i mean we're at a situation where the advice we've got back from the llfa is this acceptable and they're not raising objections so it, it possibly could it may not meet the tests of conditions if we it might may not be reasonable that that would be my only comment thank you i thought i'd ask the question any further questions councillor watson i did put my hand up you must have missed it chair um one of my questions has been answered because it um, was the same one as um, Councillor Hill said. Um, I have two. Um, one's very easy. Is this, is a, a big change from 36 houses to 14 houses not sufficient to have to reconsider the whole thing again? No, because the wording of the description of the outline was up to 36. Okay. Um, so it could that's be one. We're bound, but yeah. Okay. Thank you. That's half one answer. Um, the second one is. I heard the question from a colleague about the priority changing on the roads. I, I know it's not something that is, is concerned with this, but I can't find anything about the changing of priority in here. So is it, is any, can we shed any light on this from the officers? I don't understand what that's about. I have actually just been in contact with highways and they haven't come directly back talking about the priorities, but what they have said is the access has been worked through at length with the applicant to provide the best arrangement for the proposed dwellings. Um, Chris Mead, our highways manager, has been personally involved and has had lengthy discussions with the, the planning representative. And the proposed access and response to the local area is appropriate in terms of the reserve matters. The change of priority is not a reason that will be of concern, either as MPPF safety or capacity. As we have no further questions, Sorry, Councillor Mather. I just want to ask that question again, actually, because I don't think I've got the answer from that. We, we are, you're telling us that we can't look at the highways today, but yet you've approved something that hasn't come in front of this committee um, on either set of plans. So I think it needs clarified that is that change of priority a part of this planning application or not? And I think the, you know, the local consultation hasn't been there, whether it's a council level, private ownership level or other you know, operators. There's a HGV operator above that hill. They've not been consulted. Yeah. So I think it, that does need clarified when that has been approved or, and by who. You're right. And I understand that. Really, just to try and clarify matters is with the outline application, we established the principle of the development. So the houses being there and the access but obviously the details are still to be sorted out and um, so you know the, the change of priority that's something that highways will have discussions on because they've got conditions um, that will need to be discharged and as, as part of the um, the reserve matters but the principle of the access coming there has been established but yes the detail is needing to be and this is you know why i suppose we we don't have those details they they've taken place between or highways advisors and the applicant. It's a it's a mess, really, isn't it, with this outline planning, if I can say that, um, to get to this point. But I, I think that when we have been said in the document that we can't discuss highways, and yet highways priority has been changed. I'm not arguing where the access is, 
but the priority has been changed and that to me should come as part of this application. I do understand your frustrations. Um, the, it's not that it's a mess, but what's happened with this application is it goes back, dates back to 2013. Had COVID not happened, it would have fallen away. But COVID gave that extension, which kept this application alive. And so it does feel like there's been such a long time because um, the application came in in 2013, but it took us a really, really long time to determine it because there were highways issues, then there were changes to the affordable housing. So I do appreciate your and local residents' um, frustrations, but we have established that access. And that perhaps I've badly made that point of we've established that access, we can't take that away. But yes, the detail does need to still be considered, which is, is now taking place between highways um, and, the, and the developer. Any further questions? If not, do we have a proposal? Councillor Thorne. Yes, Chair. This is a very difficult application, and I'm sure especially for the new members. You know, we start out off with an outline application for 36 houses and the application that we've got before us is uh, markedly different um, and you know from what our planning officer has said um, the reduced numbers come down largely to problems with drainage and topography um, you know it, it's very difficult to get 36 houses on this site and I think, you know, as such, 14 dwellings, um, obviously they're going to be um, less pressure on roads, less pressure on um, the water needs. Um, you know, I would like um, to move this application uh, for approval, but I know, you know, locally there are issues we all look at um, common road there, it looks more like a dirt track than, um, you know, a road to a, resi uh, a housing um, residence. Um, and again, the drainage, you know, the drainage has long been a problem in this area. And I know, obviously, this is a problem that frustrates um, Willa Parish Council. Um, but I think all in all, you know, we've got a better application now than we started off with uh, less houses um, you know our drainage guy seems to have the matter in hand um, and I do realize too the frustration that locals and the local member has with access and roads you know that is without um, this current application we're just looking at appearance landscaping layout and scale the access you know, was sorted on a previous occasion. Um, I know there are things to work through and improve on, but I'm sure, um, as in all planning applications, they will be, um, they will be progressed. Um, Chair, I'd like to move approval of this planning application. Thank you. Do we have a seconder? Can I speak, Chair? Thank you. Yes, I, I'd second this um, application I, I understand some of the concerns that are there but what I think we need to remember um, as councillors that what we've been asked to do is to approve this reserved matters um, which is about the, the design and layout of the estate um, the other uh, matters concerning this development were considered and were passed and we are where we are and we can't change those things and therefore, on the, what we've tried to be judged on today, what we have to judge on today, I'm happy to um, support uh, that we accept them. Thank you, Chair. Can I just clarify, Chair? Um, you mentioned that, um, that you move approval, obviously, with the conditions in the report. Yes. So we have a proposal to grant permission is there anyone wishing to debate this? Councillor Mather. Thanks, Chair. Um, 
I've, I've spent quite a bit of time looking through all the plans back to th 2013. I think it's taken over my life trying to get a, a judgmental view on it. And I, I take on um, what you said, Councillor, about you know looking at this plans and not the whole, the whole um, back to 2013. And I think I would um, approve these set of plans if if the condition was that the three bedroomed homes, which is a need in the town, were for rental accommodation for local people. Because I think then I could go back and stand and represent the people and say that there is a community benefit on this site, getting three bed rental homes, which is needed. And I think I would approve that set of plans if, if that was a part of the, the motion. But currently, I think um, for re three bed rented property, I don't feel that there is such a need in the town for for the people that's standing on housing queues waiting waiting for property. It would not benefit them, so I don't feel it would be a community benefit. Thank you, Councillor Thorn. Yes, can I just ask our planning officer? You know, is it possible that um, the applicant might consider another look at? Um, the affordable housing because you know I do get where councillor Maid is coming from um, you know discounted market value um, it's beyond the reach of a lot of Wooler residents whereas um, a rented property isn't and um, you know that's a real need in that area Um, in terms of, we're tied by what the uh, national planning policy framework says in terms of um, in terms of provision of affordable housing on site, and it, it says to us we should be providing ten percent of a ten percent should be as discount market value properties. So we'd be in wouldn't be in direct compliance with that if we proceeded down the route of altering it to affordable rent. Can I just? Come in there. I mean, the advice from officers is that you go for the, the, the DMV housing, you know, that's in line with policy. Um, you, you can um, alter your proposal and, and you can propose that they're going to be rented. Um, but of course, it, you know, if the applicant doesn't accept that, we are sort of in danger of, you know, they might, you know, not agree to that. And we, you know, we would then need to to bring it back. I mean, our advice is we really should be going with what the Housing and Able Officer is advising, and they're advising that it's DMV. That's policy compliant. You can there is a mechanism. You know, you can go against it, but it's not it's not the advice from your officers. Councillor Watson, just just one point. Um, you know, I think to me, a, a, a councillor makes a reasonable point, except for just one thing that my experience is that not all large families, not all growing families who've got several children are always well off and that there's probably you know people with four or five children could be very have very average jobs and therefore to be able to buy a house big enough to put a large family in uh, there must be a demand for that and I don't think I often see um, affordable housing for four bedroom houses so I don't have too much of a problem with that if we were seeing lots and lots of four-bedroomed houses on affordable, I would say, yes, that's not a good idea. But to have one or two spread around, I think, is OK. Councillor Hill. Thank you. Can I just ask clarity? Because sometimes this comes up quite a lot, where you have a, an application that's been in, and there has been applications where I've booted against, and then it's sort of come back. And then you know, people say, well, we are where we are. This has already been approved. So I'm going to take like a, a ridiculous example, but just to illustrate my point. If, say, you know, there was an application to knock down a lovely old church and create a 100-foot McDonald's somewhere, and you were dead against it, but it happened, and then they came back, this is the design, this is the colour. But it's still, I mean, are you still entitled to, to vote no, even even though the original application has been passed. Do you know what I mean? I'm using quite yeah. an extreme, but just to make the point, because sometimes we keep getting that, we get applications and they're like, well, that's already been passed, so this is where we're at. 
Do you mean in an example of um, we've say brought something to committee? It's an outline for a McDonald's. Well, well sort of like the, yeah. um, like this. I mean, I'm using that as a bit more of an yeah. obvious so extreme uh, example. E but e even in those, in in that example, so it's been approved at outline, contrary to what officers say recommended. The reserve matters comes in. We can't go back on the principle of development. That's been accepted. That's there while this application is still live. So the only thing we, if we did choose to, res to refuse the application, it would have to be on the matters we were considering as part of the reserve matters, you know, the appearance, the layout. But we couldn't take away the principle because it's there, which is, you know. How we, how we vote, I mean, obviously you don't actually have to say why you're voting, but can you still vote because you just don't like the you can plan? You can still refuse a reserve matters application, but you must refuse it on what you are considering. So you shouldn't refuse it on the principle you shouldn't refuse it on access you would need to refuse it on the design on the layout um, does that help yeah. councillor Watson I need to come back because I think I've made a big mistake and I'm trying to correct myself here reading about the number of houses that we're talking about the affordable houses are not four bedroom are they yeah. if I'm reading it I, I said that and I was wrong because they're not. They are, what are they? Three bedroom? That's my understanding. Which actually. Yeah, that's my understanding, but that would be firmed up in the affordable housing statement, which is separate to this. So doesn't that answer some of the questions that some of my colleagues have been answering? I mean, I didn't have too much of a problem, but other people did have a problem about four bedroom houses. If we're saying we're offering three bedroom houses for rent, then that's more in line? I'm not sure it was this, the number of houses that they were concerned about. It was more that it, they didn't want DMV, they would prefer rented, is my understanding. Okay. Yeah, Chair, if I could just clarify that. Yeah, my concern is um, Wooler has a shortage of three bed rental property. Often the people that are wanting these three beds, as Councillor Watson rightly said, are lower income families. Um, just needing a bigger property to conform to the rules of children sharing bedrooms, ages, uh, male, female, whatever it is. Um, we have a, a real shortage of that. And it seems when we've got an application here in front of us today, and I've, I've had to step back from, like rightly say, I've, I've, I'm not arguing the big proposal, I'm arguing what we've got in front of us today. We've got an opportunity here to try and repair the town, whether they are owned by the developer or a housing association, I don't mind. But the, there's going to have to be a site management plan in here to manage the site, to, to look after the grass, to manage the, the, the tarmac roads and the paths. Why can't the, that management company or whoever it is manage three, three bed rental homes and it would be for the benefit of the town? And I think a lot of this miscommunication, very poor communication between the developer and the people of Wooler that might go towards repairing that and that's why i would vote for approval if the three bear if you know i know it's going against the national guidelines but let's have a stance here let's do what's right for that area and that planning application never mind you know it's at some point we've got to do what's right and that would be how i'm going to vote councillor thorne yes Jay. can i ask um, our solicitor, you know, would it be possible for me in my recommendation to approve to ask the applicant to have another look at um, the affordable housing and how it was let in as much as, you know, um, Councillor Mather has the local feel, he knows what the town wants. Um, and, you know, that's what we want with all these planning applications. We want to sort of help solve local problems. We want public benefit. And the public benefit of this application um, would be met if these were houses to rent rather than houses for sale at a discount market price. I think, um, Councillor Thorne, um, I don't think you can uh, move a motion to approve with asking the applicant to look at something. Um, you, you wouldn't be able to do that. It's got to be a finality. Um, what you could possibly do is defer the application um, to get an affordable housing officer along. As you've heard, 
Um, the officers are saying that affordable rent wouldn't be NPPF compliant. Um, so I think you'd need an explanation from that affordable housing officer as to how they've come to uh, their conclusion for this matter. However, I'm going to ask the, the, the planning officers. Obviously, the, the affordable housing element is part of the outline, isn't it? It's not part of this reserve matters. So it's not actually really for consideration today in any event. <laughs> God. It's a bit of a, a red herring, I think. Would you agree, Vivian? That's right, because this application will be ba is bound by the outline. So if, if this gets approved this afternoon, it runs with the outline, they run together, and the Section 106 is actually attached. You know, Melanie's quite right. The Section 106 is attached to the outline permission and not this reserve matters. Yeah. There's actually no... If I can just say that there's no... Um, as the officers have st stated, this is reserved matters for appearance, landscaping, layout and scale. The affordable housing um, provisions are dealt with in the outline. Snooker then? Right, so what you're telling me is that's already set. It's not yeah. up for debate. So, you know, we cannot choose whether it's houses for rent or discount market value. What we get, what our public benefit is that we've got three affordable houses out of the 14? As a percentage, yes. Okay. Councillor Hunter. Thank you, Chair. I was just going to push on more of the affordable rent because, again, that's what's needed in that area. But if it's in the 106, can that still be worked in as part of the original one, that that's the preferred that rent rather as discount market value because that's the need in, in the rural areas? I mean, the, the only way that the Section 106 would get changed now is if the applicant came to us to ask for that to be varied. We can't hold them to ransom and say, we'll give you this if you vary the Section 106. It would need to come from them. Councillor Mather. Um, well, Chair, well, why don't we defer this um, application? Um, actually get the housing officer, which I feel probably should have been here, And 15, all the documentation states 50% affordable homes. In 2017, for some reason, it magically changes from 50%, which is 18, to, to uh, 15 homes. And it's documented then that 60% of those 15 homes were going to be for, the mar for rental uh, property. So if we're not discussing the original 106, I'm happy, because the original 106 says 50%. So this should be 50% of the 14 homes, and I'll vote it through. Thank you, Chair. The original, um, it, it doesn't say 15%. It did originally. When the application came in, they came in for 50%. That was them offering that up. There was, no, it, there was no policy requirement for them to give us that. They then changed their mind as the application was being determined. And when it actually did get determined, it was for 15%. That is what the, the existing Section 106 is for 16, for 15%. Sorry. Sorry, if I can just clarify, I think talking through it earlier um, in response to Councillor Thorne's question, I know I mentioned deferral and, you know, a, a, how, an affordable housing officer being here, but actually um, Vivian's confirmed that it's not part of this application. You can't look at affordable housing. So there would be no point in deferring it to have an affordable housing officer here because next time you'll be in the same position that you're only considering the appearance, landscaping, layout and scale and the affordable housing will be dealt with through a different process. So you couldn't defer it and hope that the developer had the goodwill of the people of the town he wants to develop in and put the motion forward that he would do 50% rental property and not 50% for sale? That's not, this, it's not part of this application. I think that would be unreasonable for, for us to do so and um, we could be at risk of them going for non-determination and we could then be found to being unreasonable and we could get costs. Councillor Thorne. Yes, Chair. Um, you know, as has been said, um, it's, it's a real thorny issue with us all, um, this affordable housing. And, you know, like councillor may that I have a real problem with it um, you know as has been mentioned um, initially the applicant offered 50% affordable 
obviously that was a great apple. It was a great enticement to us to approve this at outline planning stage. And yes, you know, we've come back now. We're looking at our planning policy, which only requires 15. Um, and you know what I would like to think, although we're not allowed to make it a condition, I would like to make a note to applicants to say that, you know, we feel in Wooler there's a real need for affordable houses to rent. And, you know, would he consider moving from discount market value to um, houses to rent? I know in planning terms that doesn't carry any weight. We're told it's with outside what we're looking at today, but I would like that on the application just because initially they were offering 50. Now, you know, our national policy only requires 15. But come on, applicant, give us those three properties to rent in Woola. I know, you know, in planning terms, we've got no teeth, but that is an ask, and it's an ask that you know, I'd like to be on as a note applicant. I, I don't think you can ask, uh, I don't think you could put it on any decision because it's not a condition, it's not part of the application. It, you couldn't even put it on and as informative, I would say. Um, but obviously the planning uh, applicant's agent or architect, I'm not quite sure, I can't remember, sorry, um, is here and I'm sure he, he will take that back. Ultimately, it would have to be resolved between the applicant and the affordable housing officer and what their, their requirements are. And as Vivian has pointed out several times, the, the council is, to a certain extent, bound by the NPPF as well. So all of that would have to be taken into account. OK, well, the, the agent's here. He's, he's listening. Um, maybe he can take that back for us. But, uh, yeah, what you're saying is we haven't got any teeth to... Councillor Hill. I was just going to make a, a general point. Applications like this just make me think there must be a better way. I mean, I, I get, I completely get where you would expect somebody, if they want to build 100 houses, to put all the detail of all the house and all the drawings until they just check that, in principle, you know, the land is suitable for housing. But, you know, we've got the pre application process. I just think there must be a better way so that we can consider all the detail at one time rather than having we're here and now we're here and we can't go back to the affordable housing. It's just I'm just throwing that comment and it it's obviously the planning system again, but I think there must be a better way. You agree like you're agreeing with me. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Is there any other comments for debate? If not, we have a motion to approve and we'll go to a vote. Um, Councillor Thorne can sum up if he wants to. Please. Sorry, Councillor Thorne, do you want to sum up? Well, you know, only as much to say it's the, in the end, it's the affordable housing that, that really frustrates me, the, the public benefit of this application. And, you know, I know we've got national guidelines, but we've got a, a local member here. He knows his patch. It's houses for rent we require. Um, and, you know, we'd like the planning agent to take that back to the applicant. Um, I think this is a much better application, the initial one. I think 36 houses crammed on that um, hilly side, you know, was too much. Um, I think 14 is much better, um, you know, in terms of appearance, landscape, layout and scale, it's a much better application. Um, but, you know, if we could only deliver um, the affordable housing in a way that would best suit the residents of Wooler. You know, in saying that, I'm over the application. Thank you. We'll now go to a vote, so could I ask all those in favour to raise their hands? Yep. 
All those against? The motion is passed. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to item agenda six. This is application two one stroke zero two three nine eight full. Front and sorry, rear and front ground floor extension, eight priest house, Prodder Street, Annick. Could I ask the officer to present the application? Yes, thanks, Chair. Um, yeah, so this is a rear and front ground floor extension at eight police houses in Annick. Um, you'll note here is the site location plan. Um, I'll move on to the next slide, which will be, which will show you more in context. However, um, you'll notice that it's the, at the end of a street. Um, here's number eight here in the red line. All the works, as usual, will be within the red line, um, especially on a householder like this. Um, you've got the school here. And then you've got police houses road, which goes along there. Um, you've got your aerial photograph here, showing it in the context of Annick. So up here, you've got Annick Town Centre. So you've got the market square there where my cursor is. So it's just south here. You've got what used to be the Duke School site there that's currently vacant. Um, we've got Swansfield Park School here. Um, my understanding the access to the school is actually down this way, so this is a bit of a dead end. Um, so you've got this road here. This, one, this proposal is at the end of that road. So here you've got the existing plan on the left-hand side. Um, this is what we normally refer to as a site plan or a block plan. Um, You've got the proposed on the right, which shows you've got a rear extension here set away from the neighbouring boundary. And you've also got a front extension here. You'll note the difference, do a bit of spot the difference between the two plans there. Um, so you've got a porch extension here. You'll note the neighbouring house already has a porch extension um, projecting a similar amount from the front of the house. Um, here you've got the existing plans in terms of a floor plan. So you'll note there's no front or rear extension on this at the moment. Moving on to the proposed, you've got the extension here that's sort of flat roofed. It's got a, a large lantern in the middle to let the light in on the rear. It's quite a generous garden. You'll remember from the previous plan. You've also got the front porch extension which projects from the front of the property. Um, we'll just move on to the neighbouring, um, onto the photographs of the site. So this is the neighbour's porch. Um, this is the front of the, existing, of the existing property with a porch to run along the front. But it will project a similar, if not same distance from the front of, current front of the house to here, approximately here where my cursor is. Here is the rear of the property. The extension is on this side to the right of the property as we're looking at it here. And I'll just go back to one of the, um, to the proposed plan. Here's the design of the porch, which shows you've got, it's a, it's a bit of a lean to on the front of the property you've got here. And that concludes my presentation. Um, the recommendation is for approval from officers subject to the conditions as put in the report. Um, in terms of other updates, I'd just like to point out that in 1.1, we should be referring to the chair referral. 
scheme of delegation rather than the virtual scheme of delegation, um, which was previously what we were using a few months back when we were, when we were meeting virtually. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you. We have one speaker in favour of the um, application, and that's Oliver Whitling. You have five minutes. Thank you. Good afternoon, and thank you for the opportunity to speak in support of our planning application. With specific reference to our planning application, there is not much more to add further to the points the planning officer has made in their written report to demonstrate how this application doesn't sit within the objections raised by the Town Council. At the design stage, we discussed with the architect a proposal that would sit within the local and national planning guidelines. I would just like to make the few following points to support the application. The front extension will only bring us in line and not encroach the neighbouring property, supporting the semi-detached nature of the houses. It carries on the lines of the neighbouring front extension. It will also run in line with other front extensions further down the street. Planning was approved for two other front extensions on the street in 2009 and in 2012, which do sit closer to the boundary line than this one is proposed to. The proposed front elevation retains the existing design with the door and windows remaining in the exact positions they are currently and is to be manufactured from as close to existing materials as possible. We are looking to extend the front of the property to give us more practical space to work from home, which due to redundancy is now a necessity for both of us. It is difficult in our current setup due to the family dynamics and without the increased space, it may be impossible to maintain. I thought it was worth noting that under permitted development, I could go ahead and build a front porch 1.5 by 1.5, which is the same depth as the extension being proposed and still two metres from the boundary line. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Members, questions to the officers? Councillor Swinbank. Thank you, Chair. Um, just to point out, I didn't ask for this to get called in. So there's been a decision made elsewhere. Um, could I just ask, um, obviously the, the contentious part is the front extension, I think. Um, on the front extension, uh, which is going to abut up to the neighbour's um, porch, is there a window on the, on the front, I can't work out from the plans, whether there's a window, sorry, on the side which will abut the neighbour's window on their porch? Councillor Thorne. Yes, Chairman. You know, can I just ask the planning officer, um, you know, we, we've read the, the comments of Annick Town Council, but, you know, there is precedent for this on numerous other um, properties along that terrace, isn't there? Yeah. Thank you. Councillor Hill. <coughs> Thank you. Just, just on the same line, can I clarify, is somebody living in the neighbouring property and have they objected that we're talking about the encroachment? I'm not aware if there is someone living in the property. However, there's been no objection. There's... Okay. And I'm obviously not familiar with the uh, page 33, the Paragraph 7.5, the Town Council quoted wording from policies H6 and HD7 of the Annick Neighbourhood Plan as reasoning for refusal. Um, have you got any, what does that say exactly and what's the calculation that you obviously don't agree with the Town Council? Alright, sorry, okay. 
providing this, that context? I mean, certainly it's a, it's a very difficult planning ground to establish generally, isn't it? Um, coaching another property. I, well, we, as far as we're aware, all the works are within the land ownership of, the, right, of those okay. properties. And we've, we've clarified that with the agent. Um, and they stated that, yes, all works are within their land ownership boundary. Okay. Councillor Watson. Just to clarify one point for me, my understanding is that precedent does not have any weight in applications, am I right? And that every application is considered on its own merits? Yes. Thank you. Councillor Hunter. Yeah, possibly precedent's not been set, but it's then again, how do you find grounds to refuse it if there's already been similar in the street? Councillor Mather. Thanks, Chair. Um, I can't... I, I may be missing it here. You've mentioned about the, the porch on the side window. And actually, by the photo there, it, you can see, you know, the rears, isn't it? Um, I can't see where in the design or the, the building materials how the two porches will be butted against each other. I think that's the query, isn't it? Because if you've got a neighbour with a window and you're going to build a brick wall against the window, um, then you, know, you might have problems. But I think it's quite rightly noted that there's been no objections to this. But has there been any design of how the, the two porches will meet? Uh, that's a party wall matter and it wouldn't be something that we consider as part of the planning application. It's, it's set for civil legislation. Any further questions? In that case, do we have a proposal? Councillor Watson. Thank you, Chair. Yes, I would like to um, propose that we accept the recommendation. Um, it's the, the officers are in line with the request of the Town Council, which is, in my view, a good thing um, and also uh, I don't think that precedent has got anything to do with this whatsoever because if we apply that rule then everybody in the street could simply say I'm going to have a port now then because Mrs Smith next door has got one and we don't want to lose that control and we haven't lost that control because every individual case has to be uh, considered and I think that's what we're doing here um, that's why I'm happy with proposal. Do we have a second there? Councillor Thorne. Yes, I'm happy to um, second that recommendation. Um, they're both modest extensions to um, the rear and the front of the house. And as has been said um, at this meeting, there are um, numerous modest extensions to the fronts of these properties along that street and that is why I am seconding this recommendation. The president is there many times and this will fit in very well with the streetscape that's been established with these porches on the fronts of the property. I'm happy to second the recommendation, Chair. Do we have anyone wishing to make comments of debate? Councillor Swinbank. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yes, um, well, I'm going to go against my um, town council on this because I can't, I can't see that it isn't supported by the, uh, the Annick and Denick neighbourhood plan. Obviously, the, the detailing of where the two porches meet is the, the kind of crucial matter. But um, the basis that you could refuse uh, one person a, a porch on the basis that someone else had got there before isn't, isn't, you know, it just doesn't stack up. It isn't fair. So I'm, uh, I'm going to vote for the proposal. Any further comments? In that case, we'll go to a vote. Sorry. Sorry. 
Councillor Wilson can sum up. Thank you. Can I ask those in favour to raise their hands? Thank you. That motion is passed. We will press on with item seven, which is for members' information only. It's the appeals update. No doubt you've all gone through those. Councillor Hill. Thank you. I'm, I'm allowed to ask a question, aren't I, on this? I know it's mainly for information, but am I okay? I'm okay to ask a question yet. Yeah. Uh, it's um, page 43, the second one um, from the bottom regarding ASDA. Now, John Sharp's dealing with this. Just a couple of questions. What is the expected rough, I know, time scale for these things to be considered and also this is a noise issue um, is we're not going to rely on as they're employing sound consultants <laughs> to say this is the uh, you're going to have to declare an interest <laughs> you when I mention as do we? Um, will, are we, will we will the inspectorate do some sort of noise survey is there any sort of information that you could give on on the process of this and the time scale Yeah, of course. I think um, if I can just interject, yeah. Councillor Hill, although I said you can ask a question, you, you can ask a question, that's fine, whether the, these particular officers know about it know is a different one. Yeah. Um, so perhaps they could take those questions back and you could get a written response from the actual officer dealing with it, who will have more of an idea about what's, what stage it's at, etc. Um, if, if Vivian and James aren't involved in this, yeah. they're, they're not going to know. I mean, I do know a little bit about it. I'm just, sorry, I'm just trying to um, capture it where it's just in, isn't it? So it's, um, we refused it. It's um, insufficient information in relation to noise potential impacts. Um, I mean, it's up to the planning inspectorate and um, they tend to they you know how we would go to public protection we would go to different people they tend to just make those decisions themselves and um, so it's likely that they would they would just um i don't know if they've got their in in-house experts that they speak to but um it's likely that they'll they'll just make a decision on it i know last time i spoke to john he said there's quite a backlog you could be expecting is that true um because there's another one in, in catherine seymour's ward overleaf as well it, Anyone that's got an appeal, are we likely to be expecting to wait at least six months or from the date? Or We're waiting a long time. I'm not yeah. sure it's six months. They, they seem to come through all together, don't they? Yeah. yeah, so normally there is, my understanding is there, a bit, is there a bit, there is a big backlog. However, I've had ones that have been lodged and then gone through a start, to a start letter, which is effectively their holding area that came through very quickly after it was submitted. So I think it depends what type of inspector it's going to. Because I think that's what they've got now. They've got two levels of inspector. So they've got like the inspector, then they have what they call like a, an officer or a case, appeals, case, appeals officer. case officer. So if it's the kind of application that an appeals case officer goes to do and then it gets checked by an inspector, it seems to be coming through faster. But I don't know wh whether that will be the case on this one. But I do know they are that they're taking a, they are taking a while to come through. And, and is it only? It's quite interesting doing this because we always just skim over the appeals, don't we? And then we hear is the um, is it only the local authority that can respond then? So you would take all your objections and all the things you've got and give your submissions and or can anyone else no, make submissions? Third parties can get can involved. Do. Yeah, right. They can. That's If there's no further comments, we'll go on to item 8, which is section 106. And again, that is for members' information, pages 49 to 52. And if we can move on from that, we can go to item 9, urgent business. Is there any urgent business? In that case, we're on to item 10 which is date of the next meeting. 
which is Thursday, November the 18th at 3 p.m. And we can draw this meeting to a close. And, and we did discuss at the last meeting at this stage about whether we could relocate it back to the, our areas. I've, I know we haven't been able to, but do we, is the reason because of audiovisual communications? Can we just clarify why we can't have it more regionally? I don't have any information on that. I know there is a um, local area council review. I don't know if it's part of that. Um, I think you would need to take that up with the, the well, director. I think we did take it up at the last meeting. And we were going to have a reply, but we haven't had one. So perhaps the acting chair could ensure that we do get one. We will take it back to the chair and ask for him to respond to you. That would be absolutely Thank fine. you. In that case, can... Can we switch off live feed? <laughs>